All right, so we're going to take a look at some more derivatives and making a graph. So I thought we'd start with a rational function. So let's check out f of x is um, x over x squared plus 1. Before we start thinking about derivatives, let's talk about asymptotes. So two types of asymptotes I would want to look at for this particular one would be a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. All right, so vertical asymptotes, you know, come from the denominator, and I look at when would x squared plus 1 equals 0, and the answer is never. Um, even if you tried, you would get x squared is negative 1, so x is plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Um, that's a number, but it's a complex number, so we wouldn't use it, so we would just say that there's no VA. Okay, so no um, vertical asymptote. Horizontal, I'm looking at the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator, and in this case, I have it bigger on the bottom. Anytime that happens, we get um, a horizontal asymptote at zero, so that'll be good information that we'll want to use later. Now that we've gotten everything we can about the asymptotes, we want to start looking at derivatives, think do we have any critical points, do we have any inflection points, and go from there. So let's start with the derivative which you know you need to use the quotient rule on. So let's start out low, x squared plus 1, d high is 1, and then my high, just back to x, d low is 2x, and that would be over x squared plus 1 squared. We want to simplify this because the goal is set it equal to 0. So I have x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared in the numerator, and just keep that x squared plus 1 squared in the denominator. Um, I can quickly simplify that. x squared minus 2x squared is negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. So here's my derivative. So we've talked about during this test, test 3, we're always talking about, well, when is the derivative equal to 0? So I take this negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. When I set it equal to 0, we're really just looking at when is the numerator equal to 0. We've already said that denominator x squared plus 1 is never going to be equal to 0. Even if it was squared, it doesn't matter. We have nothing from that. But this negative x squared plus 1 would give me negative x squared equals negative 1. x squared would be 1, so x is plus or minus 1. Right now, this is a critical number because I don't have a y-coordinate, so I need a y-coordinate to turn it into a point. To get the points, you're always going back to the original function. And if you need to see it, just let me scroll up. It's x over x squared plus 1. So when I put in 1, I get 1 over 2, which is a half. And I put in negative 1, I get negative 1 over 2. So these two numbers right here are important. These are our critical points. Well, now that we have our critical points, we can look for are there any inflection points, which means I need to do the second derivative. So again, here's my first derivative. We need to do a second. So second, again, starts low, x squared plus 1 squared. d high is negative 2x minus high, negative x squared plus 1. And make sure you put that in parentheses. That way you don't lose this negative sign in front of it. And then go back to d low. So I have a 2 from the um, chain rule, x squared plus 1, now to the power 1, and then a 2x all over x squared plus 1 squared squared. All right. Um, so what do we have? We have x squared plus 1 squared. I have negative 2x. I have minus. Notice I have this 2 and this 2x. Let's call that 4x. Leave the negative x squared plus 1 for now. And let's look at the x squared plus 1 all over the bottom now is to the power 4. So let's point out that I have an x squared plus 1 and an x squared plus 1 and uh, x squared plus 1. So what I want you to see is on the left and the right of the numerator and in the denominator. So I can reduce this. Um, I can take out this one all together. This one's gone. I get rid of one of these. So now this is power 1. I get rid of 1 on the bottom. That makes it power 3. So now I have a negative 2x. I like that to be first. I have x squared plus 1. I have minus 4x, and I have negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 cubed. Okay. So thinking about when we did this in class makes me think, 
I shouldn't try to factor this right now. Let's just expand it because I factored it in class. You guys went, what happened? Um, so let's say, let's do it the long way. That's fine. Let's do negative 2x times x squared is negative 2x cubed. Negative 2x times 1 is minus 2x. Negative 4x times negative x squared is positive 4x cubed. So just pay attention to that negative sign. Negative 4x times 1 minus 4x all over x squared plus 1 cubed. So now, negative 2x cubed positive 4x cubed is 2x cubed. Negative 2x minus 4 is x is minus 6x over x squared plus 1 cubed. Okay. My goal, once again, set this equal to 0. One more time, I'm just going to take the numerator, 2x cubed minus 6x, set that equal to 0. Here I do have to factor. So both terms have a 2, both terms have an x, leaves me with x squared minus 3. This says x is 0, this says x squared is 3, so I get x is plus or minus the square root of 3. Okay, so I have three inflection points here. I have 0, I have square root of 3, and I have negative square root of 3. So these three numbers, I'm going to plug back into the original, which let me remind you was x over x squared plus one. So if I put zero into f, I get zero. If I put the square root of three, and you guys know you can put in your calculators, I don't care, um, you would get the square root of three over four, which I will approximate for you in a second. And then I would get negative the square root of three over four. So this was me just putting it in, not using the calculator yet. Um, but I'll make them better points for you because I think that'll help. So this is 0, 0. Um, if I do the square root of 3, so let me put that on my calculator for you real quick. It's about 1.73. And then the square root of 3 divided by 4 is um, about 0.43. Okay. So same thing. Let me just put the whole thing in my calculator. I'm getting there. All right, I also have negative um, 1.73 and negative 0.43. So these are my inflection points. So let me put that as IP. And if you remember, up further, we had our critical points, which were 1, 1 half, and negative one, negative one half. Okay, along with a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay, so this is all the stuff I've acquired so far. Let's see what we can do by trying to put this on a number line. Um, as you make, well, not just a number line, a Cartesian coordinate system. As you make your coordinate system, pay attention to the fact that these numbers are really tiny. I have 4.43, I have 1 half. Those numbers are pretty close together. So let's call this one, this will be negative 1. There's 1, 2, here's 1, 2. Um, just because they're going to be close. So um, start with my 0, 0, and I generally like to put my inflection point in a different color. So let's do red. So I have 0, 0, that's an inflection point. I have 1.73 and 0.43. Let's try it out about here. And then the same thing on the negative side, negative 1.73 and negative 0.43. Um, okay. So, oops. Sorry, that one didn't draw, did it? Um, then I have my critical points to put in, and then I'm going to go back to just my black pen to do those. So I have at 1, 1 half, and I have at negative 1, 1 half. Okay, so now we're just going to kind of play connect the dots. So when I'm looking, I like to draw from inflection point to inflection point, kind of. So I can see down here at 0, it's going to go up to this um, 1, 1 half, and then it's going to go over to this um, other one that I have as square root of 3 and square root of 3 over 4. So can you see, like in class I told you, it looks like a rainbow to me. All right, so it's this arch. <clears throat> um, this definitely tells me I have a focal max right here. But I was just connecting the dots, and you can look naturally at how it went. So it was going up to get to this point, that's my max, and then it will go down. So it's doing what it's supposed to. It changes direction when it gets to a critical point. And then it's supposed to change shape when it gets to an inflection point. So this is concave down, which means after this it's going to be concave up. 
here's the harder part. You got to go back and say there was an asymptote. So when it gets here, it's not going to change what it's doing. It was increasing, now it's decreasing. But as it decreases, it's going to curve down um, to the x-axis. Following me on that, concave down, switch to concave up, follow your asymptote. Okay. On the other side, from the zero, it's going to go down to pick up this critical point. It was um, going to change its direction, and then it's going to follow the asymptote. So I can see it was concave down, it switches to concave up, it was concave down, it switches to concave up. So from here, I can tell you everything about the graph or about the function. I can tell you where it increases. And if we look, this was decreasing until it got to here. So this point, which is a critical point, this is negative 1. So from negative 1 until it got to be positive 1, it was increasing. Where is it decreasing? Everywhere else. So it was decreasing from negative infinity until it got to negative 1, and then also from 1 to infinity. If I want to know concavity, so starting at negative infinity until it gets to my first inflection point, which was that negative square root of 3, that was concave down. Then when it got to negative square root of 3 until it got to 0, it was concave up. Um, from 0 to the square root of 3, it went back to being concave down. And then finally, when it got to the square root of 3 and then to infinity, it was concave up.